Hey, what is going on guys, RZ Stealth here, and in today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at the new strong and weak picks for patch 9.8. And then because I do have quite a bit more time on my hands right now, I'm going to be streaming a lot more over on Twitch. So if you guys are interested in catching a stream, then there is going to be a link down in the description below. So you guys can go check that out if you'd like to. So to start it off here for Amumu for next patch, a couple of different really good buffs. He's getting a passive buff, so bonus damage increase from 10 to 13%. Q cooldown is being lowered there by 4 seconds at rank 1, and this is really big because you don't actually max this ability out first on Amumu, you max it out last, so having it 4 seconds less there at rank 1 is really big. And then he's also getting a little bit of a, I guess, quality of life change here to his Q, to where you're now going to follow the target even if they cleanse or QSS your Q, so overall pretty nice changes to Amumu for next patch. I do think it's going to bump him up into A tier, uh, especially for the lower elos. These changes are going to be really nice for Amumu for next patch. And then for Blitzcrank for next patch, a couple of changes here. Passive is getting a change to where it's no longer going to scale off of 50% of his current mana, but 30% of max mana. So I think this is a pretty net neutral change here. There's going to be situations to where this is going to hurt him, but there's also going to be situations to where this is going to benefit him. So pretty neutral change there to the passive. His ultimate though, getting a really nice change. Blitzcrank's attacks are now going to deal 100 damage at rank 1, 150 or 200, plus 3% of his maximum mana. So this is really good because Blitzcrank, his previous R passive was just really inconsistent. It would like proc on minions. It would just be, it would end up taking your AD carry CS. So the fact that on Blitzcrank's attacks, it's now going to proc, it just adds for more damage for his burst combo. So this does mean that Blitzcrank's all in at level six does get stronger next patch. So Cassiopeia getting one change for next patch, E cost is being lowered there at the later ranks, so it doesn't really affect her E spam in the early levels, and therefore I don't really think it affects her too much for next patch. If they reduce the mana cost in the earlier levels, so she could go back to just like E spamming the first few levels and just chunking out the opponent, I can see that being a bigger buff, but because it's only at the later ranks, uh, Cassiopeia is just going to stay an A tier pick for next patch. Some pretty big changes to Fiora for 9.8, so WCC durations being increased by 0.5 seconds, W damage being increased there by 20 at all ranks, and then her E cost is being lowered, so it's just going to be 40 at all ranks now, so I do think these are really nice buffs to Fiora. I don't think they're like over buffing her with these changes, but I also think they are going to be enough to bring her up for next patch, so I do expect Fiora to be an A tier top laner for 9.8. And then Nar here getting buffed for I think the third patch in a row now, so with these changes, I do think, or with this change, I do think it is going to be finally enough to bump Nar up into A tier for solo queue. I do think that this is a pretty significant change, ultimate cooldown being decreased by 30 seconds at rank 1, 40 at rank 2, and then also 40 at rank 3, so this is really going to help out Nar. Basically, whenever he does have his Mega Nar form now, his ultimate should always be off cooldown and you should always be able to use it, so it's definitely going to increase Nar's playmaking potential for 9.8, and I do see this helping him out a lot for solo queue. For Jin for next patch here, a couple of different changes. E is getting a duration increase by 60 seconds there. Recharge time is being changed, but it's only getting buffed at later ranks, and because you don't max this ability out until last on Jin, it doesn't really matter too much for next patch. His ultimate's damage multiplier is getting buffed though for next patch, so based on missing HP, it's being buffed there by 0.5%. So I think overall, decent changes for Jin, but they're not going to be enough to jump him up into S tier. I think he'd need like a little more of a buff to bump him up into S tier for next patch, so I think he's going to stay in A tier 80 carry for 9.8. So a buff to Shadow Assassin Kane for next patch, the cooldown on his E is just going to be 8 seconds, it looks like, at all ranks now, so this is a pretty nice buff here to Kane. It does mean that his mobility, if he does go Shadow Assassin, is going to be insanely strong, and especially like once you do get CDR on Kane, 8 seconds with like 40% CDR, the cooldown on that E is going to be very, very short, so this might mean that more players now go over uh, to building Shadow Assassin Kane for next patch, but I'm not too sure if it's going to be worth it to go Shadow Assassin over Rast because of this change. I feel like Rast is still just going to be a lot more consistent in most scenarios, so I don't see this bumping Kane up into S tier for next patch. 
For Master Yi for next patch, he is now going to get the Ghosted effect when he does use his ultimate, so a pretty decent buff here to Yi for next patch. Although, when you think about it, are you really going to be running into minions when you're playing Master Yi and you're dueling the opponent? A lot of the time, you're going to be fighting the enemies like in the jungle and stuff, and I feel like you're not going to be, unless you're playing like Split Push or Top Lane Yi, I feel like you're not going to be running down the lane and running into minions too often, but it's going to help him out in certain situations, but I don't think it's going to be enough to like make him just a god tier pick for next patch. He's going to stay pretty much where he is in this patch right now. So we got some more buffs for Nautilus in this patch here. I think this is another champion that's been buffed a couple of patches in a row. And I do kind of like the approach that Riot's tanking recently with buffing champions. They're not just overloading a champion with buffs other than like Urgot, those buffs that he got a couple of patch patches ago. But these changes to Nautilus here over the past few patches, they've been going kind of slowly with the changes, but as they've noticed, it's not really affecting them too much. They've given him more buffs. So in this patch, he's gonna get a passive duration increase there by 0.25 seconds it looks like at all ranks or in the earlier ranks it's going up by 0.25 seconds and then it, at the later ranks it's going to be the same so a nice buff there to Nautilus's early game his Q damage is also being increased there by 20 damage at rank 1 so this does increase Nautilus's all-in potential in the early game for next patch because with the Q damage increase and with the stun duration increase on your passive I think these are going to be enough to bump Nautilus up into A tier for 9.8. And then we got some buffs for Orin for next patch. So passive item buffs, Sunfire Cape or the Forge Fire Cape, the health and the armor are being increased on that upgrade. Infernal Mask upgrade, also the health and the, then the magic resist are getting buffed. And then Frozen Fist armor is getting buffed for next patch. So pretty good changes to Orin here. This is actually better than a lot of people would think probably because these are items that Orin does go like almost every single game. So you're gonna be going Sunfire Cape on Orin, Orin in a lot of AD maps matchups. You're going to be going Abyssal Mask in a lot of AP matchups. So because the health, like the health increase there on these items is actually quite a bit, like 200 there on Infernal Mask. And because the armor and magic resist are also both being increased there on both the items, pretty good buffs for Orn for next patch. And I do think he's going to move up to a viable top lane pick for next patch. I still think he's going to be relatively weak compared to most top lane picks, but I do think if you're like an Orn main, or if you really need like a tank on your team and you're good at Orn, then he's at least going to be viable for 9.8. And then for Renekton for next patch, quite a few buffs here, and these are kind of similar to the Fiora buffs in the sense that I do think that they're not overshooting with the buffs, but they're also going to make Renekton stronger for next patch. So HP is being increased there by just a little bit, so kind of an interesting buff. Attack speed growth is being increased there by a little bit as well. Armor growth increased by a little bit. And then his Q's healing, I guess this is probably a little bit of the bigger change. It is being increased by 25%, so more healing there for Renekton for next patch but as we get later on into the video there's changes to bramble vest that might actually make these changes kind of negligible and they might not matter too much but overall i do think that these four changes here will bump renekton up into a tier for 9.8 so we got two buffs to Sejuani for next patch. W1 max health damage is being increased there and W2 max health as damage is being increased. So pretty good changes to Sejuani for next patch. She's in a pretty bad spot right now in solo queue. And I do think these changes will make her stronger for next patch, but they're not really gonna bump her all the way up into like A tier or anything. They're decent changes, but she's still gonna be a relatively weak jungler for 9.8. And then we got some buffs to Singed here as well, and along with the Fiora and the Renekton changes, nice changes to Singed, so they are going to bump him up into A tier for next patch in my opinion. HP uh, regen is being increased there, W slow is being increased, and then his E's cost is being lowered, so they're not overshooting on these buffs it doesn't look like, but they are going to be enough to bump, to bump Singed up into A tier for 9.8. And then Teemo for next patch, he's getting a ton of different changes, so there's no way for me to really actually make an accurate placing on where Teemo is going to end up for next patch, because like pretty much all of his abilities are getting changed. He is getting a, I guess a mini rework. A lot of his abilities are staying the same, so I wouldn't really call it a rework, but I do think we'll have to wait and see till the patch does release and like how strong Teemo is, because with all the changes, it's just really hard to predict where he'll land in 9.8. 
For Trundle, another one of those champions getting buffed slowly but surely over the past few patches. So Q bonus damage here. Finally, he's getting a buff to his Q. I feel like this is going to be the change that finally jumps Trundle back up into a good spot in solo queue, or at least in a viable spot. I think he's going to be an A tier jungle pick for 9.8 here. So Q damage being increased by 20 at max rank, really big because you do max that ability out first on Trundle. Our cooldown is being lowered there by 10 seconds at all ranks. So just overall, these are some nice changes to Trundle for next patch. I feel like the changes in previous patches have been pretty negligible, so these are finally some true buffs to Trundle for 9.8. And then for champions getting weaker for next patch, we do have Kale here. So AD is being lowered by two, armor is being lowered by two, and then attack speed ratio is being lowered by a little bit there. So I just don't think this is going to be enough though to drop Kale out of S tier. Like these changes just don't seem that big for next patch. She's still one of the strongest top laners for 9.7. So expect Kale to still be an S tier pick for 9.8. And then we do have some nerfs to Zed for next patch, but it looks like they're going relatively light on the nerfs here. I guess the new ultimate Zed skin is coming out in the next couple of patches, so they do want to nerf Zed, but they probably don't want to nerf him too much due to the skin sales from that new skin coming out. So Q damage there, it is being lowered by 10 at all ranks, so not the end of the world for Zed. W cooldown is being increased by two seconds at rank one. I guess it's going to be two seconds at all ranks there, so decent nerfs, but I think Zed's still going to stay S tier for next patch. He's going to be like borderline S slash A tier uh, for 9.8, but he's still going to be a very solid pick for solo queue. And then for some item changes for next patch, like I was talking about earlier, the Bramble Vest is getting a buff for next patch, and this is also going to apply to Thornmail as well. So Bramble Vest, the Grievous Wound duration is being increased from one second up to three seconds. So overall, a really big buff to tanks for next patch and a pretty big nerf to like healing bruiser champions. So even though Fiora and Renekton are getting buffed for next patch, this is where I don't really think it's going to be as big of a buff as it could be. Uh, this change here is just going to make some of these tanks really good into these bruiser top laners and you can just rush Bramble Vest and those champions won't really be able to heal when they're dueling against you in the laning phase and just throughout the whole game. Now, Blade of the Ruin King is getting a nerf for next patch, and this is kind of confusing to me here because why are you nerfing Blade of the Ruin King when Lucian is already pretty weak right now, but you nerfed Lucian in previous patches? Why did you not just nerf Blade of the Ruin King a couple of patches ago when both Lucian and both Vayne were pretty strong picks instead of nerfing Lucian directly and then also indirectly nerfing Lucian in this patch here? So this is going to be a really big hit to Lucian. He's already in a pretty bad spot. He's going to get even weaker for 9.8. Vayne, Twitch, Ash, Kog'Maw, Varus, Kalista all get affected a little bit uh, by these changes here, but I think the biggest loser is definitely Lucian with these changes. There are a couple of junglers that also go Bork right now. I guess there's Master Yi. Kale does go Bork, but she does have a different, she does have a couple different build paths, so I don't think it really affects Kale too much. There's also Kindred that does go Bork, so a couple of other champions also do get slightly affected by these changes as well. And then we do have a buff to Stormraiser for next patch. So the Energized Effects Amp is being increased from 30% up to 35%. Energized Effects de Decay is being changed from over one second to 1.5 seconds. So what this means here is that it is an indirect buff to Kai'Sa. I think Kai'Sa is really the only champion right now that's consistently building Stormraiser. I feel like most other AD carries sometimes pick it up in the mid to late game as like a very late item. Uh, but I just don't think even with these buffs, more uh, champions are going to pick it up. I still, I still think it's going to be a pretty niche item and it's only really going to affect Kai'Sa for next patch. And then we got Coup de Gras here to end out the video getting a change. So the damage is being increased there by 1%. However, it's no longer going to give you adaptive damage on champion takedown. So I think that overall, this should be a net nerf to Coup de Gras for next patch because the bonus adaptive damage you got on takedowns does really help you out in team fights and in the mid to late game. And I don't think the damage being increased there by 1% on it is enough to offset that. I could be wrong, but I think that overall, this is going to open things up more for just more variance in the third row of the precision tree and you should be thinking a little bit more about which option you're taking for next patch. 
So that is going to be all for this video, guys. So there's quite a few different champions getting buffed for next patch. I don't think there's any champion that's going to be like super OP because of the changes in this patch here. I still think that Kale and Zed are both going to be really strong picks for next patch, even though they are getting nerfed. So with that being said, though, guys, if you did enjoy this video, then be sure to drop a like and subscribe if you have yet to already. So thanks for watching. Have an awesome day, and I'll see you in my next video.